Hey, you guys know Skyler? Anyone up here know Skyler? Skyler's old school, man. He's been here since we started this thing. I've watched this little guy go from really, really teeny. And uh, I, think I, I think I met you when you were, what was he, four? Wasn't he four? I think he was four years old. How old are you now, Skyler? Ten years old. He's a, he's a leader. He is a leader. And no matter what he does, kids follow his lead. <laughs> Naturally born leader. Awesome. Well, Skyler has decided to uh, make Jesus Christ the Lord of his life, which is awesome. And uh, so super excited about that. I kind of was waiting for him to say it. I kind of knew it. I think a lot of us did for a long time, but he just finally came to his dad and they had that talk yesterday and he made it official. So, um, yep, it's awesome. God is good. And uh, so, uh, you know, like any, any good disciple, any good disciple, one mark of a, of a good disciple is an obedient disciple right one who doesn't just say that jesus is their lord he is their lord so when he says do something they do it right and so that's why skylar wants to get baptized because he knows that's what jesus says to do so that's what he's going to do right now you guys ready to celebrate with him awesome come on skylar hop in there now this water is way different than when his dad got baptized when his dad got baptized we did it at our community pool in the middle of the winter that was a quick baptism bro Oh, man, was that fast. It's not going to be so fast right now. Why don't you sit um, crisscross for me? Would you do that? Awesome. Awesome. So I'd like for you guys to take a few moments here. Let's just pray for Skylar. This is like a big deal, right? Huge, huge deal. Huge deal. So let's pray for him. Um, Father, I, I, you know what? Sometimes I, I'm at a loss. And this is one of those beautiful, powerful God moments um, when you just show up and you're so real right here right now and uh, we are fearful in your presence but also so secure in awe in love so appreciative of what you're doing in the hearts of the people here and certainly what you're doing in Skylar's mind and in his heart and his soul you are transforming him into a new person and it's been so great to watch it since the beginning. And Lord, we want to celebrate him today. We also look back on all the years. It's just such a blessing to our church to look back over the years and see how a young boy comes and is taught the good news and taught about Jesus and taught about the Bible and, and his parents loving on him and all of this coming together, a community of faith pouring into one person and now it's come full circle. Here he is receiving your gift in the baptistry. Just so awesome, God. Awesome. This is how it's supposed to be. And so we thank you for him. Lord, we ask for your greatest blessings upon him. There's something in your mind that you have planned for Skylar. You have, you have hopes. You have dreams for your son. And, and you want to see him become all that you would want him to be there's there's something there and so lord i pray that you would uh, begin to to unveil that to him and to his family and to us and and just help him to reach his full potential in the lord and uh you know i'm not a i'm not the the prophet but man i just i just sense that you're going to want to use him to to share the good news to a lot of people and to preach your word to people. And so uh, I'm just asking for your blessing on him. Fill him with courage, boldness, love for people, a love for you, and just help him to lead. You've given him that quality, so use it for your glory. Lord, I pray that you would help him to always remember this moment right now, that you'd burn it into his memory forever. He would always think of this moment thank you for that. Lord, I ask for your blessing on him and his family. And I thank you that you chose this church to send this family. I do thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Based on that confession, 
your dad now will bury you like Christ, and like him you'll be raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God that raised Christ from the dead. <laughs> Baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just want to say that um, it took three hours to warm this water up. And Skylar is worth every minute of it. However, that doesn't mean it can't be used more. So if you sense that God is calling you to the altar tonight and that you want to give your life to Christ, you can do that. If you sense this, this, this calling in your spirit to be obedient to the Lord and you've never yet been baptized, I would just say, why wait? So I'm going to stand right here. The Revolution Band is going to sing another song. And if you sense that God is calling you to that, the altar is open wide and the tank is ready to receive. So if you'd like to receive that free gift of God for everlasting life, you can get that done right here, right now. Band. This is Joshua. This is Joshua. Say hello. Hi, Joshua. God's Holy Spirit just tugging on hearts. This is what he does. This is what he does. And so he's sitting there and realized, hey, I got baptized when I was 10. But he just told me that like when he did it, it was good. You know, he's supposed to do it. But he really honestly said I didn't have really any understanding of what was going on. And so um, he, he is a believer, but he's never been been baptized in obedience because he knew that's what he's supposed to do as a grown man you know what i'm saying like not what mom and dad wants what i want i want jesus to be my lord and savior and i want you all to know about it so uh, he wants to be welcomed into your church family so just give him a little welcome here please i love it when people don't care about sitting the rest of the night in soaking wet clothing because they just want to be obedient to the Lord. That's awesome. That's awesome. So um, pray with me for Joshua as well, please. Come on, Daddy. Let you do the honors. Is there anything you want to say? You good? Awesome. Mom and Dad. Awesome. Um, Father, I just thank you for Joshua. I thank you for his uh, obedience. Your word says that my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice, they hear it, and they follow me. And so obviously, uh, he's one of your sheep because he heard your voice deep into deep. Like you've, you've called him, and he's responded, and he's following you. So Lord, I, I thank you for his radical obedience on display for us all to see. And, and I, love, I, I love this, and I know you do too, that someone would throw all the cares of the world to the side just to be obedient to please their father awesome so lord we thank you for him i pray that you would use this man this mighty man of god in a in an amazing way uh, lord fill his heart with your word so he wouldn't sin against you fill his heart with your word so he could he could proclaim it to the nations lord just use him in a mighty way and, and so, Lord, we thank you for him. We thank you for placing this family in this church. And, and, and we just ask for your greatest blessings, provision and power and love and compassion, all of God. Just pour it into this young man, Lord, and use him for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you, who is your one and only Lord and Savior. Based on that confession, Tyler will now baptize you. Will, you'll be, listen, hold on a second. I know you're anxious. I know you're anxious. <laughs> and now he buries you with Christ. And like him, you'll be raised to new life because you trusted in the mighty power of God that raised Christ from the dead. Now you may baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Awesome. God is so good. Yes, he is. I'm telling you, dude. Someone want to tell me how good he is? Anybody? Any, who, if someone has 30 seconds right now to tell me how good God is, tell me right now. Who is it? Raise your hand. 
Raise your hand. Good. 30 seconds. Let's hear it. I'm alive here. Uh-huh. And tell, well, people don't know what the deal is. What's the backstory? Now she's clean. Awesome. Praise God. So, so God can heal people? Really? Ah, so, Michelle, are you out there in the lobby? Is she out there? Michelle! You out there? Okay, so maybe she's not out there, but Michelle Shaw has something going on in her arm. She's been battling with this for how long? A year. It just cramps. No doctors, no pills, no nothing makes this thing go away, and she's out there in tears and pain. So, um, so why don't we pray to the God that healed Paula and see if we can get that same God to answer our prayer right now and ask him to do a work in Michelle now. You guys, but you got to believe. And you got to believe. Don't be double-minded in this before you pray. You got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe that he will hear and do. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you would heal Michelle from her pain. We pray, Lord, your word, your word, when it's speak, when your word is spoken, things happen. And so, Lord, I pray in the same, the same voice that spoke uh, the universe into existence, I pray that that same voice would speak to her arm and bring healing to her arm. Do something awesome here tonight, Lord. Bring healing to her arm in Jesus' name. If anyone believes me, could you just tell me amen, please, please. All right, so Lord, you've heard our, our requests, and we ask that you would do the, something miraculous right now in Jesus' name. Awesome. Um, I'd like to read something to you. Um, says this, you know what, not to get all Catholic on you, could you please stand as I read God's word to you? Just as a sign that, you're, that you hold his word in high regard, just a symbol to the Lord, just letting him look down upon this church and seeing a group of people that really, really uh, value his word when he speaks that you, that you care. So that's what we're doing now. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over the, them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day and met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Here comes a good amen spot. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Amen. amen. You can, yeah, you can clap. You guys can have a seat. Um, if you didn't know, that's uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. It's a text that's commonly read um, but rarely duplicated. And you know, it's really strange that I don't understand that either because um, as Christians, we, we, we consider this book as God's word and, and our instruction on who he is and who we are and how we're supposed to do this whole Christian thing, you know? It's the Bible, right? But yet, how, how often do you actually walk into a church and, and experience a community like the one we just read about? Not, not, not too often, really. Not too often. And that, that's kind of a surprise to me. Um, we've, been, we've, been, we've spent probably the last nine to ten months preaching through the Gospel of Luke. And it was our endeavor to learn about Jesus. If this is his church and we're going to worship him, we need to understand who he is and what he said and what he taught and what he said about himself and what he said about the Father and what he said about you and what he said about the loss. I mean, we just need to make some quality choices, right? And it has to be based on truth because God is looking for, for those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. And so before we can get fired up with our emotions and feelings and, and go all in on this God, we need to know who he really is. And so we've been studying through the Gospel of Luke to find out all this info. And we don't want to ask mom and, and we don't want to ask grandma and grandpa and, and we don't want to ask Google. 
We want to ask God, and He's spoken clearly in His Word, and so that's what we've been doing for months and months. Uh, last week, though, we took a little detour, and uh, we paid uh, the Apostle Paul a visit uh, over there in Philippians chapter 3, and uh, we, we remember, last week we talked about that, that remembering past victories help us in current crisis, Right? That when we look back at the faithfulness of God, when we, when we went and we pleaded and we asked him for something and he did it, and you can look back on that and go, man, I won that one. I was delivered there. He was faithful. And so you rejoice in that and it gives us confidence in our current crisis. And so we want to always be uh, remembering and celebrating the past, uh, but focused, listen, focused on the future and believing that the best is yet to come. That although God has done some gra- crazy and awesome things in your life in the past, that you believe that he's going to do crazier and more awesomer, th- is that a word? Awesomer things in your life personally and in the life of your church. And I believe that that is true and I hope that you do as well. So we get done with that and so of course I jump back and, and you know I want to get back into Luke this week and We'll go back into Luke this week, and go back into Luke this week, and I'm thinking, man, and it's like, no. You know, I shared with Josh earlier that every time I start to even remotely have a sniff of, like, arrogance or pride, and I think that I know what's going on here, he's like, little boy, just stop. <laughs> Seriously, come on. And so I went back to Luke, and... Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So, so there's, this, there's this verse, there's a section of Scripture, it's in Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 6 and 7. You, you don't have to go there, but th- let me just tell you a little bit about it. This is the, so the Apostle Paul, right, he's obedient to the Lord, and he is compelled to preach, and woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. And so he's going around from city to city, and he's sharing the good news of Jesus to people, and they're planting churches, and they're appointing elders, and all this is going on. It's great. So he's being faithful to the call to evangelize, and that's what we're supposed to do. It's weird because in Acts 16, 6 and 7, he's trying to go to this city and he wants to do that and it says that the Holy Spirit wouldn't let him. And I'm like, wait a minute. Bless you. That doesn't make much sense. You're telling me we're supposed to go do this, but now you're not letting me. And it always was weird to me that that would happen until this week. I get it. See, the Holy Spirit leads us into truth, the Bible says. And he's our teacher, and without his help, we don't learn anything. So if I'm not learning, like if I'm being lazy, right? If I'm being lazy and I'm not digging into the scriptures and I learn nothing, that's my problem. But it's not for a lack of looking. Like I was at this thing, and I was reading it over. and I I wasn't slacking on my Bible. I don't know what you were doing this week, but I was not slacking on my Bible reading. And I got nothing. So I understand now why the Holy Spirit just sometimes says, yep, not this, not now, no. Okay, I get it. But Acts chapter 2, that was alive. You ever do that? You just read and nothing, you go to nothing, and boom, right? Acts chapter 2 was alive. And so tonight, I want to I wanna focus on the last component that we read about in that first verse. It says that they were devoted to the, to the apostles' teaching. That's the word of God. They were devoted to the fellowship. That's you guys coming together for a common good, a common purpose, which is really why we're here, and that is to exalt the Son of God and to spread His kingdom to the ends of the earth. That's the only reason why this church is here, is to do that. And so we're devoted to the Word of God. We're devoted to this. We're devoted to sharing in meals, which, by the way, Tonight after church, for those of you that just love worship and love the fellowship, those of you that are devoted like this right here, remember I just said many churches don't really have that? Well, this is what we're striving for. So for all of you that really want the authentic, that really want the real, our service doesn't end when I say amen later. So Tim and Jessica, see there's Tim right there, that's Tim, and that's Jessica, all right, right there. They would love it if all of you would come back to their house after church tonight and keep church going, right? Seriously, I'm not joking. Really, yeah, we'll go. 
We'll go. As long as you guys get me out of there by like 9.30 in the morning so I can come back here and, and do our morning service, I'm in, right? But seriously, if you want to bring some food, bring some food. And they're going to bring their instruments, and we're going to worship, and we're going to pray, and we're, going to, we're just going to love on the Lord and love on each other till who knows when. That's what we're going to do, all right? So, so it says that they were committed, to, devoted to these things. And what was the last thing? Devoted to prayer. Devoted to prayer. See, the Bible doesn't say that they, it doesn't even say that they prayed often, although I think it's assumed. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that they prayed frequently or often. It doesn't say that they prayed loud. It doesn't say that they prayed soft. It didn't say that they spoke uh, flippantly. It didn't say that they spoke in King James. It doesn't say that they prayed long or short. It doesn't say that at all. It says that they were devoted to prayer. Devoted meaning uh, loyal to it. Um, Faithful in it, steadfast, um, constant, committed, dedicated, devoted, fond. I'm fond of prayer. Are you fond of prayer? Yeah. I'm fond of prayer. Yeah. Even if you don't pray much, you know that when you've prayed, it felt good, right? Come on. It felt good. You're like, man, that felt good, man. You really knocked that grace out of the park, man. That felt good, right? You know it feels good to pray. And you know it feels good to come to church. You walk out of here all the time. Man, that was good, man. I needed that. Then you don't come next week. I don't understand that. I, I, I used to, I, there was a time I, I was a better prayer than I am now. And I, and I would fast and I would, I'd walk the city, like Tavares, I'd walk it at night. When all y'all are sleeping, I would walk the city and I would pray. And man, it was awesome, man. God meets you there when there's no distractions. You could just hear from him. And guess what? I just don't do it anymore because I'm stupid. That's why. There's your theological reasoning. Dumb. I know it's good, but I don't do it enough, but we want to fix that problem. Um, part of the definition of devoted would be to uh, be given over to something. I'm given over to this thing. This is what I'm all about. This is not some uh, peripheral issue. It was the, it's a pillar of my existence. It's who I am. It's who we are. It's what we do. That's what, pray, that's what Christians do. They, they pray. And they were devoted to prayer and the Lord, listen, and the Lord added to the church daily. Now listen, Mike said something a few minutes ago when he was announcing things. I have a different perspective than most of you. We talked about this last week. I started this church years ago, and there was just five people in the living room. And they're all gone. And so to stand up here tonight and see this, all these new faces, all these new people, this is awesome, right? But this didn't happen... I'm just telling you, and I don't understand the mystery of prayer. Nobody does. Only God understands. But, 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 but something happened when we started gathering on Monday nights to pray. We, 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 we started, I, I guess it was Robert said, we should get together and pray. So we, we did it, and it was like every other week or once a month or something. Then he said, you know what? You could see like something started to, 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 to under the surface, right? People started to come a little bit more, right? They want to pray a little bit more. You see, listen, you don't have to raise your hands in worship. You don't. You don't. You don't have to. You just do whatever God's made you to do. But when you start looking out and you see, and you see hands flying up and you hear people singing more aggressively than they ever did before, something's happening. Something's happening, right? And so he's like, you know what? We should pray every Monday night. So we start meeting on, on Monday nights every week to pray, and what started years ago with, with myself and Jessica and Mimi, okay, this past Monday we had 20 people in this room, right? That, listen, awesome, right? Because, but, I don't understand it, but there's something about the Lord that he, he's all about your commitment. And if you'll buy into this thing and you ask him to do something, he wants to do it because it proves how awesome he is. God is about God. Big time. And he loves to do things to show how powerful he is. And so the more we're committed to praying, the more he will add to the church. It says it in the, this is when God becomes real. He's not just some old story about Noah. This is when he becomes real. When, when you read something in the scripture and it says they were devoted to this stuff. And when they were devoted to this stuff, he added thousands of people to the church. And so when you read that, you're like, man, that's awesome. Man, I wish our church was that way. 
And so, but when the people of the church hearing the text decide to devote themselves to the same thing and you start seeing it actually happen as the Bible prescribes, like, that's awesome. That's when you know he's real. And because of that, more people are coming. And look, look around you. More people are coming. More people are coming. This is how he draws people to himself through his church that is devoted to these things. And we see it happening. You know, you want to talk about prayer. This is like, this is like the coach saying, let's get back to the basics. So maybe you're like bored. But you shouldn't be bored. You know that the Bible, God's word, says pray 313 times. Now, I understand that some of those times have been hijacked because they were praying to false gods and all that kind of stuff. So I get that. But the vast majority of them are talking about us praying to him. 313 times. It also says the, the word uh, prayer 109 times. It says the word prayed 65 times. So, so can we just talk about this almost 500 times? God's word talks about prayer. So, so it, does it surprise you at all to, to hear that in two, space, two places in Scripture, both Old Testament and New, Isaiah 5, 7, Matthew 21, 13, both state that God's temple, the place where God's people gather to worship Him. You know, this is not a temple, I get it. But, but this is a church. It's a building. There's nothing special about this, this concrete. God has always had a place where people come to meet Him. And, and so it says that God's temple will be a house of, of prayer like it could be a house of a lot of things we could do a lot of stuff while we're here but there's one thing that it look at your neighbor and say must there's one thing that it must be a house of prayer and we're seeing that happen more and more here and as a result you're seeing greater things happen here amen Listen, this is plain and simple. Let's just make it really, really simple. We can do a lot of things, but he wants us to be praying up in here. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to pray. He wants us to pray. He just wants us to talk to him. When God's people gather, what are they supposed to do? Pray. Well, like how, you might ask. Well, how, how, how would they pray? What? What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, let me just share with you God's word. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.1, he says to, first of all, to pray for all people. Pray for all people. Philippians 4.6, um, pray about everything. And 1 Thessalonians 5.16, don't stop praying. All people, all things, all day. That's really what God wants. No one's doing it, but that's what he wants. All people, all things, all day. Why would we do this? We see what he wants, but why? Why does God want us to do this? James 5.16 says that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Now, before you go get arrogant on me and think, oh, I'm righteous. No, you're not. No one is righteous. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that your righteousness that you conjure up, the look at how good I am, is filthy rags to him. Okay? So, so, so the, the water's wet over there. I mean, the, the ground is wet over there. So if I grab one of those towels over there and I mopped up that nasty old floor, which it might look shiny, but it's not. It's filthy. And we're going to fix that tomorrow at two, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so if I did that in the towel and I got, and it was just disgusting and black, that's what your righteousness looks like. So when he says the prayers of the righteous man, it, it, it's not of your own merit. Not at all. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this, God um, made Christ, who knew no sin, to become sin. This is awesome, right? I don't, th I don't know if you guys all realize that, that Jesus didn't just go to the cross to accept the penalty for your sin. The Bible says that he actually became sin. That's crushing, right? So he says, uh, God made Christ, who knew no sin, 
to become sin so we can become the righteousness of God through Christ. So, so the righteousness, the, the reason why a person like you could, could pray to the Father and it actually has power in it and it actually produces something, like the reason why more people are coming to this church is because when, when you prayed, he listened to your voice because he heard the voice of his son Jesus. That's the reason why this, there's power in that, right? So, so, so when, you, when you pray, listen, we're all... I'm a results-driven guy. I, I'm a task-oriented man. Is anybody else with me? Anyone else? So you, you want wonderful results, right? You didn't come here for no reason. You came here because you want to see something awesome happen, right? So it says right there that, that the, 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 the earnest, that there's constant, devoted, loyal all the time. I'm in on this thing. I'm giving over to it. I'm loyal to it. The earnest prayer of a, of a I won't say righteous, I, Heaven forbid I change God's word, but you understand what I'm saying, that the prayers of a Jesus person, you understand what I'm saying now, right? Clarity? Okay, so the prayers of Jesus' voice to the Father has power and produces great results. Do you guys all tracking with me what I'm saying to you? You ain't Jesus, but his righteousness imputed onto you, not by what you did, but what he did. That's it. And so when that person prays, somehow it moves the Lord. He just does things when his people pray, right? We could, we could have the best programs, and we could have the best band, and we could have the best building, and we could serve Starbucks coffee, and that ain't going to move the Lord. The blessing of God comes when his people get on their knees and pray and ask him to do that which we cannot do. That's when it happens. That's what he wants for us. Okay? All people, all things, all day makes things happen. It grabs God's attention. And so the early church, they proved all this to be true. But what about us? What about us? Well, they were devoted, it says here, they were devoted to the word of God, to the fellowship, sharing in meals, and prayer. They were, and that's what happened, right? Well, sometime after that all was happening, the Apostle Paul comes along, and he writes something to the church in Colossae that we take as prescriptive for us today. Colossians 4.2 says, they were devoted, now you, devote yourselves to prayer, So it wasn't just, oh, this was an awesome group of apostles and they had the Holy Spirit tongues falling on them and so awesome things happened to them but not to you because those that that thing at Pentecost, that didn't happen in Colossae. Do you know that? That didn't happen there. So, So why would God tell them to do the same thing that the people in the book of Acts did? Because he wanted to do the same thing. He's He wants us to be devoted to prayer. He said the the verse goes on, he says, devote yourselves to prayer. Um, with an alert mind and a thankful heart. <clears throat> an alert mind. An alert mind carries with this understanding that sometimes you have to shut up. <laughs> right? When, when we pray, see, we're programmed to pray for meals, right? Anyone, you pray before you're, you're you know? So, hey, you know, thank you, Lord, for this. We all say, let it nourish our bodies. I don't even know where that came from. Someone made it up. Awesome, right? It stuck. We, we say that prayer. We pray before bed. You know, we have these times that we pray. We pray, we pray. But the Bible says that we're to devote ourselves to prayer with an alert mind. How can you hear if you don't shut up? Right? Talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and never, ever hearing anything. The people in Acts 2 were, they were in Jerusalem. And they were devoted to prayer. And Paul said to these people in Colossae to be devoted to prayer. So here's your turn to be part of the message. You can be the preacher right now. What would God say to Revolution Church? Be devoted to prayer. That was a weak effort right there, I'm saying. 
So the folks in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2 were devoted to prayer. And Paul said to the people in Colossae, be devoted to prayer. So what would God say to Revolution Church today? Right. With an alert mind. Do you know that the Bible speaks of prayer? In Jeremiah 33, 3, he says this, um, ask me. We do a lot of that when we pray, right? Help me out of this one, Lord. If you help me out of this one, I'll never fill in the blank, you liars, right? Every single one of us. But he says this, ask me and I will tell you remarkable secrets you do not know about things to come. Wow. Awesome. We spend more time watching the weather report and they're a 50-50 at best than we do talking to the one who is in charge of the weather. The one who decides where every single lightning bolt drops, where every single rain drop drops. He decides which field gets wet and which one doesn't. He decides how much and where the snow came from, where it's going to go. He decides all that and we spend no time speaking to him about the things that he knows are already coming. I want the inside scoop, you know what I'm saying? Everyone wants the inside scoop. You got the inside scoop master up there waiting to tell you some stuff. And no one comes to the inside scoop. Just come on. So, so we don't want to we don't want to just talk. We want to listen. We want to have an alert mind, right? So that's, uh, I stole this from someone, but there's, there's, there's three things that are necessary in preaching, and that is the proclamation of God's word. So I've read to you a bunch of, I've read Acts chapter 2, I read you some Jeremiah, uh, Colossians, all kinds of stuff. So there's some proclamation right there, right? Um, how about some explanation? How about why? Why would we, why do we pray? Um, there's a couple of um, old pastors, preachers. They're awesome guys. Um, Charles Spurgeon said this about, about prayer. This is awesome. I wish I could talk like, like him. He's, <laughs> I can't because I'm quoting his words, right? He says this about prayer. He says, to pray is to grasp heaven in one's arms, to embrace deity within one's soul, and to feel one's body made a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why. He said this about the church gathering, about not just that person that he's just talking about, but us here together. He says, the condition of the church may be accurately gauged by its prayer meetings. So is the prayer meeting a grace, oh, I'm sorry. So is the prayer meeting a graceometer? And from it, we may judge of the amount of divine working among a people. If God be near a church, it must pray. If he be not there, one of the first tokens of his absence will be a slothfulness in prayer. Billy Graham, simply, I love Billy Graham. Anyone else in here love Billy Graham? Man, that guy's awesome, right? He's so, I love, he's just to the point. He's a hammer, that guy, right? You're a sinner and you're going to die and go to hell if you don't repent. But I love that guy, right? And they just come like crazy. He said that prayer is just a conversation with God. That's it. You don't have to raise your hand, but does anyone feel as though they're not a good prayer? You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> well, I think God would say otherwise. It's just a conversation. You can talk, can't you? So that's all he says. That, that's what we're supposed to do, just talk to God. I, I, I'm not Charles Spurgeon, and I'm not Billy Graham, but I would just say that Bible reading and preaching are receiving that's what you're doing. When you're, when you're up, when you're sitting here listening to the preacher or you're, or you're reading God's word, you're receiving from God. I get that. But prayer is both the upload and the download from God. It's an opportunity to receive from him, but it's also the opportunity to unload the burdens on your heart to the Lord, to, to, to ask him questions that are running around inside of your mind. It's an opportunity to interact with the creator of heaven and earth. It's an incredible privilege. And, and part of explaining, listen, part, I, I'm, I'm telling you these things from these great pastors because I'm trying to explain why we pray, but part of explaining is rightly expressing the importance of prayer. Okay, the, the, to explain why, you have to understand how important it is. I would say this, that if Jesus only lived 33 years 
and he knew his destiny. He knew he was going to the cross, and he knew when it was going to happen. That's why he was on his way to Jerusalem, for his time had not come, he said. He knew what his time was. He knew where he was going. He knew his destiny. He knew it was coming to an end. So if, if you knew that you were just days away from the end, party time, right? Right? Live like you were dying, Tim McGraw. There's some things that you'd want to do if you knew life was coming to an end, if your time was limited, right? But the importance of prayer is displayed in the life of Jesus Christ. In, in Luke 6, 12, it says, just before he goes to his death, it says that he prayed the entire night. That's how important prayer is. So proclamation check, explanation check. Uh, here's application. Um, like saying, uh, y'all should come to church, but providing no place to do it. Y'all should, should give, but don't give you an opportunity to do so. Y'all should pray. Well, give us an opportunity to do that, yes. We're going to do that right now. We're going to do that right now. There's just no sense in talking about it. What makes sense is doing it. And so using the Word of God as our guide, we're going to see how Paul prayed, and we're going to see how he taught others to pray. Now I'm going to have you do something here, but before I do, I just want to give you this one word of encouragement. I know that not everybody likes to pray, and maybe you're in this room and you're not even a believer. You wouldn't even want to pray. You wouldn't know who to pray to. I'm happy that you're here. There's another old dead guy, A.W. Tozer, who just said this, and this is an encouraging word for you. He said, the key to prayer is simply praying. That's it. Just talk to him and listen. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to do something that's uncomfortable. I want you guys to break up into groups of three or four. For real, come on. I want you to group up into groups of three or four, and we're going to pray. Jesus, he said this is going to be a house of prayer, and we're going to be obedient to that. And so we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Instead of just sitting there listening to me, we're going to get together, God's family, and we're going to pray. And, and listen, if you're, if you're someone who's bold and doesn't mind speaking out loud, <coughs> volunteer yourself into a group. And if you don't feel like being, listen, you can sit, sit together, find places to sit, because it's going to be a while. And, and if you don't feel comfortable, you, you don't have to, but you can just sit in a group and listen. You can sit in a group and listen. You don't have to say a, you don't have to say a word. Just sit with the group and let someone pray on your behalf. Would you do that? Don't be alone. Don't be alone. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you some things right in Scripture that that Paul prayed and what he taught us to pray about. And I just want you to take a few minutes and just someone in the group just kind of lead that prayer. And, and, and each, each thing, I think there's like five of them, we'll, we'll take like five, six, seven, eight minutes, I don't know, and we're just going to pray about these things, okay? Is that cool? All right, so here's the first one. It's Philippians 4, 6. And it just says this. Don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He's done. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ. So here's the, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to pr someone in the group, just pray for that. Pray, just, just, just tell them, tell them what you need. Think about our church, too, as a family and what this community would need or our nation or personally. Just, just thank him for what he's done and, and tell him what we need and receive the peace that's promised. Before we pray about anything else, pray for this so we could have a calm heart and a calm mind so we can receive from the Lord. So take a few minutes and just pray for that.
Remember to have moments where your mind can be alert, moments of quiet so that you can listen as well. Take a moment of quiet. Just stay together. Take a moment of quiet and receive His peace that is promised when we thank Him for what He's done and ask Him, ask him for what we need. since we have we are at peace and our minds are calm and our hearts are calm stay together we're ready to receive we have a calm mind ready to hear from the Lord our next prayer would be to pray for one another the Bible says in Colossians 1 9 Paul says we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you we ask God to give you complete knowledge of His will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you will live will always honor and please the Lord. And your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. And really, isn't that what we want in our church? Isn't that what we want for the people? Isn't that what we want for one another? That our lives would honor the Lord in every single way and that our lives would produce fruit? Multiply, multiplying fruit. It also goes on to say, in verse 11, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all His glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. So pray for those in your group that they would learn more, that they would have greater understanding and greater knowledge, greater wisdom from the Lord. Let them know that's what you want. So pray for us to learn and pray for us to last, to get to the end of the race in victory. Go ahead. Learn and last.
understanding is to stop and listen. To do like Jeremiah 33.3 said, to ask, and He will tell you remarkable things about the future that you do not know. So as you're asking for spiritual wisdom and truth, lay before Him the, the questions that you have now in prayer and be quiet and listen. And perhaps He would speak to you. Stay right where you are. Here's our third thing that we're going to pray for tonight. First was for each other, and now it's for all people. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Paul says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them, for all people. It's probably a tough one for most of us. He gets very specific, though. Yes, we're to pray for all people. In the very next words, he says this, pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we could live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. So because he got specific, I would ask that you would, someone in the group would first pray for all people, seven billion, acknowledge to God their value and their worth, but then I want you to get specific and I want, we don't have a king, but those who have authority over us, so I'd like, I know not everyone in the room is probably a fan of our president, but he is, and the Bible says that we're to pray for the authorities. So I want to ask you to pray for President Trump. I would ask you to pray for our Congress. I would ask you to pray for our sheriff, things of that nature, those offices like that. And take some time and ask God's blessing on those people. Go ahead. Let's do it.
All right, we got two more, two more. <clears throat> pray for each other. We pray for all people. We pray for those in authority over us. And I would ask that you'd pray for your spiritual leaders. Unashamed, I would ask that you'd pray for me. I'd ask that you would pray for the elders of the church. I ask that you would pray for all those that teach here. Um, Robert teaches on Wednesday nights with adults. Um, uh, Pastor Mike Schmidt, who will be leading our student ministry in, uh, beginning in August. And uh, for the teachers... Uh, for the children in the back, my wife, Meredith, uh, Jonathan, Madison, and all those that have recently volunteered, um, pray for us. Pray for us. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 4, uh, verse 3, Paul says, pray for us too, uh, that God will give us many opportunities to speak about His mysterious plan concerning Christ. And then he also says in the very next verse, pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. So when you pray for, for your spiritual leaders here at Revolution, I, I would ask that you'd pray that God would give us opportunities, which is not just dates on the calendar, but opportunities represented by people. Now, I could have an opportunity to preach at a church, but if there's no one there to hear the message, then it's of no avail. So ask that God would send us people to share the gospel with and then ask God to help us once he does this to help us to speak with clarity so that they may not choose to say yes, but let them never walk away wondering what we said. So give us opportunities to preach and share the truth of God's word and that we would speak with clarity. Please, go ahead. Amen. And last but certainly not least, as a congregation, it should be our desire that the whole church is healthy, growing, and full of love. And so I would ask, based on 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, which says this, Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes. 
So I would ask you to pray for more people to come, that this church would grow. You see, when it says that the message will spread rapidly, it doesn't mean geographically. It means people. So he wants it to be proclaimed to more people and to be honored. In other words, that it would be impacting, that those that would hear would receive, and that more people would get saved, and that more people would be obedient. So pray for God to send more people, more people get saved, and more obedient people to God's word. Let's do this. Pray this prayer with vision. If your eyes are closed, visualize the people. Visualize what it would look like for when God sends the people to hear his word and respond to it favorably. What does it look like as we pray? All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to those, to their fellowship, those who were being saved. Father, I thank you for the clear words and the clear description in your word of what our church should look like and how we are to function. I thank you, Lord, for placing it upon my heart to do this here tonight. I thank you for allowing me the privilege to be the pastor of this church, this group of beautiful, beautiful people. And as I cast my eyes out across this room tonight and see what I've seen, I just see nothing but beautiful. Lord, help us to bring beauty to the world. Help us to take this that we've done here tonight and bring it out to a lost and hurting world. Lord, help us to be obedient to what your word says. 
to never stop praying. We thank you, Lord, right now as we look back on recent history, when we prayed, you blessed. And it gives us hope, confident expectation of an even brighter tomorrow that as more of us are committed and devoted to praying and asking you to do things that we cannot do, that you will respond and you will bless this church so that we might bless this community and to bless the world. So Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for these people. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you did with Skylar and Josh tonight. We thank you for that, Lord. We rejoice with angels in heaven. And Lord, as we leave this place now and extend our fellowship and extend our worship and extend the sharing of meals and extend our devotion to prayer to Tim and Jessica's house, Lord, just go with us so that this beauty would not end. Thank you for tonight, Lord. We love you. Help us to be devoted to this. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen.